Hi, my name is Dan, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, control aspects of a material from Blueprint and other classes. Um, so, in order to do this, I'm going to expose a parameter in a material. So, we've got um, a, a setup here. I've got a third person template, which is normal for me. I've got a box that I've set up over here, which is just a static mesh uh, box and I have put a material on it. I've created this material. It's based around the classic album cover for an album Easter by Patty, uh, Patty Smith Group. And we'll just open that material and have a quick look. Uh, I've created a uh, the, the colour map there. I've created a uh, specular map and a normal map. And there's ambient occlusion and uh, pixel death also there as well, just to cover lots of different bases, uh, all that stuff there, just because I can easily create them. Um, these are plugged into the texture coordinates, which is fairly, fairly normal. And, uh, the other thing that I've got in here is I've got one of my patent little switches, which is a foot plate with a, uh, with a, um, collision box. As you can see the box, when you stand on that box, uh, something can happen. And what we want to do is to make it so that when I stand on that box with the player, then it changes some aspects of this material that's on this uh, cube over here. So, um, let's get cracking. Now let's open that material up again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the... the the colour map there, the actual texture, and leave everything else. And I'm just going to give it a blank colour. So to put that in, I need a constant. Three vector. And I'm going to set that to a default colour of a kind of mid grey. Um, and then if we apply that, we can just have a quick look at how that looks in our world. It'll just take us a second or two to refresh. And there we go. We've got the, the grey version, but we've still got all the highlights and the map and stuff. Uh, it makes it so we can still see what the picture is. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when we stand on this the switch here, that's how it's usually going to change to a pink version of it. So let's get back into the material. Um, so the key to this is uh, twofold. The first thing is we need to make the, uh, the parameter exposed so that it can actually be used as part of the, um, as part of the, the, from a script. And uh, to do this, I'm going to right click on here and choose convert to parameter. Now that it's been changed to a parameter, it's uh, given a name. I'm going to call it diffuse. In fact, I've misspelled that, and it's really important that I make sure. I know what the spelling is because I'm going to need that later. Used English spelling of colour because I'm English. So that's given us the default values that I that I had in before for grey, but it's exposed that as a parameter. That should be everything that we need to do in the material to make that happen. Now I'm going to show you the script end, how we're going to uh, make the alterations to that. So for that, I need to go into my switch. And I'm just going to, um, I will be dragging off this uh, actor of, uh, if an actor overlap. But the first thing that I need is I need to make sure that there is a connection between this switch and that static mesh box uh, that we've got. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is by creating a variable in here, which is going to be, I'm just going to call box. Uh, sorry, we've got something called box. Um, let's call it text. I've got some 
misspelled capitals there when I was uh, stuttering there. So, uh, various things have come up. Actually, what I want to do is get a static mesh actor um, and then an object reference because what I've done is that that is just a static mesh that's sitting in the world. Let's go back and look at it. This here. Um, and when you uh, click on it and select it, the type is static mesh actor. So it's different from a static mesh in the sense that a static mesh is a asset whereas this is an instance of the asset in the world so it's turned it into an actor so in order to grab what we're going to want to do is to grab this particular uh, instance of the static mesh and then access this particular instance of the material and it will just change for this box in fact if we want to uh, demonstrate that uh, we should be able to do so. Um, this is okay. So this is slightly dangerous because I'm doing something on the on the fly, which is I'm, I've just decided I'm going to stick in a second box, and the second box should be not affected. Um, that's non textured version. I'm just using a geometry box. I'm going to highlight the texture. There we go, and then stick that box in. So the theory is. That that box over there, I know it's got double the texture on it, um, which I could fix, but I really can't be bothered right now. Uh, so that when we've gone the switch, it should affect the texture on this box here, which is the the one that we want to affect, and not on this box here. Um, and if it doesn't work, I might have to re-record re -record this without doing it. But let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, so where was I? I was in the switch, and. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to find that switch, highlight it, and oh, go back into it because I haven't quite done the remove yet. Because that needs to be a publicly available variable. So that now that I've got it, I should be able to find the static mesh I actually want. And it's called Box Brush Static Mesh. That's because I started it as a box brush and converted it to a static mesh. So that should now have that as a reference. So I'm going to grab that and stick it in here. And then I'm going to go and get to get dynamic. Yeah. And the dynamic material reference. Um, Gets uh, static mesh component first. Yes, a material instance. Number of materials, and the whole other things are coming up here, but these are not what we want. Um, so, create rather than get, that's where I was going wrong. Create dynamic material instance from static mesh component. So what this is going to do is it's going to grab that instance of the uh, material. I don't know why it calls it create rather than get. We need to tell it what the source material name is. And um, that source material is down material. That's the name that I gave it. And what actually it's doing is, is, is grabbing that instance of the material and casting it to the right material. So we should have that material now, touch wood, and we want to set the vector parameter. Set vector parameter value. And this is where we need to know that vector that we wanted, and I called it, um, I'm gonna to have to go back and check, diffuse color, I believe. Diffuse 
Oh. Yeah, I want to be absolutely sure. So we we'll need to check. Diffuse color. There we go. Right, back into the switch. And we're going to give it a value, and the value that we want to give it is a different color. We want to make it kind of pinky color. So, next we have a wonderful blushing pink. So, when we step on that switch, now it should grab hold of that uh, object, get its static mesh component, which is part of it, and then um, get hold of the material that's applied to it. And then we can alter this parameter. And hopefully, that's everything we need to do. Let's play and see what happens. And ta da! Putty Smith has gone pink, but as predicted, only on that box, not on that box. And that's to demonstrate the fact that it's grabbed a instance of the material rather than the material as a whole. And that's it from me for now.